you play young Aretha Franklin. Now that is like a huge honor. What would, how did you feel when you first got that role? Honestly, I remember uh, going in for the audition. I was super, super nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a queen of soul. I mean, you don't get opportunities like this often, so I'm really grateful to have gotten that role. I mean, honestly, when I found out I got the part, I was overjoyed. I mean, I felt like it was such a huge, I was like, I really need to portray this in the best way possible. But honestly, um, if there's any weight I want to have, it's this. So I feel really grateful that I got an opportunity to play this role, and I hope that I can do more roles in the future. Like I played uh, young Tina Turner on in Tina the Tina Turner Musical on Broadway. Um, so getting to play those two roles, honestly. Two icons. Right, right. Queen of rock and roll, queen of soul. Honestly, I'm so grateful. So you play Jerry. Yeah. And now tell us all about what you learned about Jerry while Filming. I learned a lot about Jerry. I was already a fan of his work. I had a lot of the records. I've been collecting records a bit. And I knew of him. But in order to get into him, I read his autobiography. And I talked to his biographer. And I watched some footage of him. So I was able to learn about him, but also learn about the whole history of, of R&B music. I mean, he goes all the way back to you know recording Ray Charles and running around Harlem, uh, going to jazz shows. So I kind of loaded up my brain with his memories from what he said in his book and kind of moved into it like that. What was one of your favorite moments while you were filming and playing Jerry Wexler? Well, just any time that you, you're in the studio and you kind of get that vibe going and uh, Jennifer was playing Aretha and coming up with those grooves and you know, coming up with those moments, to sort of feel those moments happen, you know, they really happened. Yeah. Because we're playing it live over and over again, but it never really got that boring because she's so good and the, the cast was so great and the musicians were real musicians. So sometimes if there was downtime, you know, I play a little guitar, so we get the instruments going, have a little jam session. A little jam session. Yeah, yeah. So that all that was great. You know, the musical discovery was really the best moments. And that time when Ted's character, uh, when Marlon yelled at me as Ted, I thought that was fun. You know, because I'd made the choice not to move. And I think it looks really funny when he comes up to me. I'm, I'm loving the suit, man. Uh, like oh, the, the green, you know, it's, it's a touch of color on the, on the black carpet. You're killing it. Oh, I greatly appreciate it, man. Greatly, 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 greatly appreciate it, yeah. So I know you play Smokey Robinson in the film. I do. Now tell us what you learned about Smokey that you didn't know prior to playing him. Ooh, I didn't realize how enchanting this brother was. I remember doing the research and I watched, um, I watched a clip, Diana Ross is performing in Vegas or something, and Smokey makes an appearance, a surprise appearance. And he says, hey, you want to sing something together? And he sits next to her, and she's like, ah, oh, Smokey. And she turns her head, and she wouldn't look at the guy. And I was like, why is she not looking at him? And the whole time, he's just staring at her, you know, as her head's turned. And they start singing, and she still doesn't look at the guy. And at one point, she turns around, and they make eye contact. And she just stares. And she doesn't stop staring as they sing. And then she leans in and kisses him. Then she turns away and she's like, I can't look at this guy anymore. She turns, makes eye contact again, kisses the man again. I was like, that is power, that is enchanting. That is everything any guy aspires to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, did Smokey have any involvement with you and in, in creating the character for him? Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to meet with him. Uh, it happened really, we had a uh, fast turnaround, so like I didn't get a chance to meet him. But like I said, I've always been inspired by him. Um, one of the biggest tools in developing the character was listening to his music. Uh, if you listen to his music, because he's a songwriter, uh, he'll tell you a story, you know? So we developed a story from the literally the lyrics to his music. Yeah. yeah. Dude, he's such a GQ model. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. And he got the clean white sneaks, you, you know? You know, don't let nobody step on those, Marlon. I mean... <laughs> Socks. We gotta make it like these are brand new. My feet ain't gonna stink. It just gotta be lotioned up. Yo, I gotta, gotta have the oil. I do the oil and the lotion. A little chapstick too. Put it in there. Make sure it all. It's all good. Now you played Ted White. Yes, sir. Now, how complicated was it portraying Ted? It was actually very hard for me because I've never hit a woman. I mean, my sisters, but they deserved it. Um, I wasn't raised like that. My mom and dad, you know, um, I wasn't raised to ever strike a woman my mama wouldn't have it my daddy never showed me that and uh so uh, it was hard but i thought what kind of man would bring himself to hit a woman and i thought an insecure man um it, not all guys are monsters but sometimes they turn into monsters and sometimes things like insecurity and jealousy brings out the worst in you but at the end of the day he's not a monster he's just a hurt little boy and so i think when you give him those layers you have a texture and you go from loving him to hating him 
to um, to feeling sorry for him. And media has always portrayed Aretha obviously as our queen of soul, but also as not having a complicated life. But we learn more about that in this film. Her life was beyond complicated, and it really you really feel good at the end of the movie because her life was triumph no matter what tragedy she went through and that's everybody's life we're always it's a reminder for ourselves like everybody's life it's not if it's all just easy it ain't what, what it's not worth the journey the greater the obstacle the greater the elixir and so uh with this movie i mean i know as a as a as as, as an artist myself it i was supposed to do batman when i was 19. It went away, the greatest thing that never happened. Because from there, I started learning to write, produce, produce and wrote and created my own show. I, it, it makes you, you have to be grateful for the journey that God gives you. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you didn't have, you got exactly what you're supposed to have. And no matter what pain you've been through, thank God for that pain, thank God for that, because that's the thing that, your fuel, your elixir, that's the thing that when you overcome that, and you may never, but that's the thing that fuels you and you, you know, it, it makes me the person I am. It's Sunday and you just went to church, Marlon. I mean, I, I feel the sermon, I feel the spirit and the Holy Ghost right All now. All right, well, we're going to do that. We, I, I, <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah. And then uh, I, I also got a special uh, coming out August 19th on HBO Max called You Know What It Is. So I have this great drama coming out, respect, and then You Know What It Is, stand-up comedy special on HBO Max. We'll be checking that out. My Boom. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us about playing the Reverend in Respect. Yeah, Dr. Cleveland uh, has been in my life uh, ever since I was a kid. We sang all of his music at church. I knew his entire anthology um, from a very, very early age, and I subsequently took over his ministry of music in my church, and choirs would sing it. So in, in many ways, I feel like I've, and we would listen to his sermons uh, as well. Uh, and in many ways, I felt like I've been preparing for this all my life. Uh, and so when I got the call, I just sort of laughed. <laughs> It just, it, I, it just was sort of like, yeah, I, I can, I should be doing this, yeah, yeah. And, and Aretha, at some moments, had a complicated relationship with her, with, with the Reverend, right? With Dr. Cleveland or C.L. Franklin. Dr. Cleveland. Yeah, um, only because he always knew who she was, right. even when she would get off center, and. When you are not ready to accept the truth about yourself, you push tr the truth away. If it resides in a human, you push them away. If it resides in a song, you push it away. Don't play that song for me uh, I, 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 that she wrote, you know? Uh, um, uh, so I, I think um, any, any resistance um, that may have manifested um, over their long, long, long um, uh, multi-tiered uh, relationship only came from both of their desires to be honest with one another, honest with the music, and honest with source. Hey Jennifer, how you doing? I'm Dario. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. You look stunning. At what moment did you know that you had fully embodied Aretha Franklin in this movie? Cha, what moment? I, I can't think of one in particular. You know, I will have to go with the church scenes. Definitely, that's felt most closest home to home to me, and I feel like to her as well. And I feel like that—that's the thing that connects us the most. Our most, our faith. Well, there is Aretha, there is Mary J. Blige, there is you. Who is wow. the next new Aretha Franklin in this generation? Oh my God, there's so many greats out there. Don't forget Miss Fantasia. I mean, Jasmine is amazing. It's so much amazing talent out there. You know, everyone is their own star and their own queen in their own right. You know, yes. And without without her, none of us would be. Right? Let us see. What was that? Um God bless the Queen of Soul. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What you want, baby?